Tom, here we are at Hanover Farms in Western Hanover, and what a wonderful place to come to talk about propagation because you're a wholesale ground cover nursery, Correct. and propagation is you. So, <laughs> right. It's not as easy as it looks on such a grand scale. Right. And I was just wondering, what are the steps to this All as right. we're standing in the propagation room of this operation? Okay. Well, we start out, we bring our cuttings in from Central America. Uh -huh. um, they're shipped in overnight. And then the girls get them, they clean them, put them in cold storage overnight. Then when they're ready to stick them, we have a rooting hormone that we just dip the entire cutting in. Right. Okay. And then they take the tray with the pots already in it and filled. This pre, sort of pre-drills the holes based on the size cuttings and the size pot we have. So simple. And then they just work heartily getting them all stuck as quickly as we can. And what a job, that's fantastic. Well, Tom, I see you have fertilizer in there. So what is the we process do. of the soil that you use? <clears throat> we have pine bark mix that we buy by the tractor trailer load, goes into a big hopper, gets mixed up. We add fertilizer and any other amendments we need. Takes it into a uh, flat filling machine. We shoot the flats through and they come out nice and even and with fertilizer and whatever already in them. That is fantastic. Makes it nice and smooth. It does. But sticking cuttings isn't the only way to propagate. Correct. You know, you can also propagate by division. Correct. And over here, you've so been kind enough to set up some liriope for us. We have some liriope here, and I've already chopped this. So you've opened in it half, up already. Right. And then you can kind of be brutal and just snap all these pieces off, and we're looking for preferably something with a root in it mm -hmm. and a nice bud. I like, the, I like the log and the cleaver, very it's a nice. Nice piece of sweet gum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hurt it. Okay, so, so we have this nice big clump. Mm -hmm. And then just, you want to take some of the foliage off because you've decreased the root mass. Mm -hmm. So we cut the foliage back so we don't have so much stress on this until it reroots. Okay, and you basically stick it back into that pot? Stick it back in a pot. Either you know, we use four inch pots or we use a little two and a half by three okay. 24 cell pot. And then from there, we take this whole tray, they're on the, the um, cart there, they're and the where cart, do we go next? And then we roll it out the door and either take it up the hill to a greenhouse, or in the wintertime, often we use this greenhouse, and we roll them through the doors and set them down in a bottom heat bed. Well, let's get going and go see that. All right. This Lauren and Burnham house was put up in 1974, mm -hmm. and it will hold 2,500 flats. Oh, my. So that's a lot of, you know, there's 50, pots in a flat times 2,500. That's a lot of plants. That's a lot of plants. Well, there's a lot of vinca on this side, and I see a lot of variegated ajuga on this Correct. side. And so you've been very busy. But how long, you know, these plants, I see these are young, and these are, you know, have been growing on a little while. So how long do they stay in this house? Well, it takes vinca about four weeks to root. Okay. So it, and this has been here two weeks mm -hmm. and they're getting started putting out roots and then two more weeks, then we'll pick them up and move them to a growing house. And then from there, it'll take another three to five weeks for they're big enough to sell. Okay, but this house particularly, <clears throat> what are the attributes that they stay in this house? Cause I see well, everything's on the ground. Here. Yes, it's on the ground and underneath this cloth, there's this quarter inch tubing mm -hmm. that we pump hot water through in the winter time. Now it's, it's warm enough now that we don't need to use the bottom heat. Right. But from October till about the middle of April, everything gets heated to about 74 degrees and the water runs off of thermostats. We have these sensors that are behind you. Okay. That one monitors the air temperature and one monitors the bottom heat temperature that it's automatically comes on and off. We set it at the bottom heat at 74 and the air is at 55. So it's completely automated in here. We hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but from the, you would set a move on to a growing house, and how long do they stay in the growing house? To, and what's well, that transition? This, this ajuga, for example, is ready to sell now. Right. Okay, and, and it had we had time a couple weeks ago, we would have picked it up and put it in there. But this, this time of year, it's okay. We just, we have started shipping it out of here. It's your busy season. It's, yeah. it's been crazy, which is a good thing. We all want that until it happens. Yes. <laughs> um, but. So it, it's all crop dependent. Some mm -hmm. crops like liriopes will take us a year to mm -hmm. get a good set of roots and some new growth on them. Uh, Juga takes maybe a month. Okay. You know, it's just a little bit more aggressive. Vinca is, is eight to 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. So. But you have to transition it because they'll be, say it's in the winter time and okay. they're in this wonderful environment, that right. greenhouse. It's <laughs> nice in here in the winter. Um, 
So in the winter, we, we will pick these up after they're rooted after about four or five weeks. Mm -hmm. We move them into a poly house, just a hoop house with a cover and, and double poly right. that we heat to about 40 degrees for two weeks. Then we cut it back to 35 for two weeks. Then we cut it back to 30 for a week and then we turn the heat off. So and that it's on its own. It's on its own, <laughs> so when you buy it, you plant it in your yard, you don't have to fear that it's been growing in a 90 degree greenhouse and You've it, had it the cold is gonna get zapped. Yeah, yeah, an acclimated plant. Okay, so in, in buying it, I'm a garden center and I've put it in order to Hanover Farms. You'll take it out of that growing house. What's the process Correct. to get it from that house over <clears> to my garden center? Well, we have to look at every flat. There are 50 plants in this flat and we wanna make sure everyone is healthy, growing, green, looking like it's supposed to. And then we take it from there, we put it back on the cart, and then somebody comes by with forklifts, picks these carts up, takes them to our, our loading dock. And then from there, we get a load plan. There might be eight customers on a truck, right. or six customers, so we have to say, okay, customer A wants 10 of these. We put 10 on his cart, and he wants 10 of these, and put those on his cart, and then we load them on the truck, and we ship basically from Richmond up to Pennsylvania. Okay. You know, all of Northern Virginia, Maryland. Um, majority of our product goes to re-wholesalers, which are uh, operations that sell to small landscapers that can't afford to come down or can't mm -hmm. put a big enough order together for us to ship it to them. Right. Uh, garden centers, we ship to right many garden centers. And local landscapers, uh, as well as some larger landscapers in the Northern Virginia area will order enough to get a a shipment shipped to them. Well, I know locally that um, Hanover Farms was just purchased by Cross Creek Nursery yes. down on Southside um, Richmond. And yeah. so I, I've seen some of the tags out and about there yes. of Hanover Farms. But do you use uh, local nurseries and such to we distribute do. to? We do. There are several larger nursery and re-wholesalers in the Richmond area that, that we our product is on goes to. Well, I know this business has been around since 1984, and I've just enjoyed watching it grow, literally. It has grown. It, it has, has grown. grown. And I appreciate you taking the time out of a very busy time of year to share with everybody You're the welcome. process of what it's like to propagate on a very large scale with 96 houses you manage? Yes, ma'am. That's quite a large scale, much yeah. bigger than my little flat in my backyard. Well, you so. know, <laughs> it's, it's all relative, and it's like a machine. It just moves goes along. Right well, so thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Certainly.